Canyon Baptist Church of Christ church family, church friends, we greet you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you to another broadcast that we're bringing you today, and we are planning to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We invite you to worship the Lord with us. Wherever you're tuning in from, we, we are just grateful that you are worshiping with us once again. If you've not done so already, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and select the red subscribe button. By doing so, you will receive notifications when new content is added to our YouTube channel. So once again, we thank you. We invite you to worship with us at this time. We'll begin with our call to worship. We're we reading from Psalm 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, and sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord and bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Honor and majesty are before him, and strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto, unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering. Come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Please join me in prayer at this time. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we we trust in the name of the Lord our God. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is great and greatly to be praised. We recognize, O oh Lord, that there's power in your name, that there's healing in your name, that there's strength in your name, that there's mercy in your name, grace in your name, forgiveness in your name, power, and everlasting life in your name. So we come before you today lifting up your name. Yes. It's a great name, a holy name. Yes. Demons bow before your name. Everyone in the earth will bow to you in your holy and precious name. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we recognize that his name is above every name, and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Yes. Lord, we come before you to worship you this morning and in the beauty of holiness, Father. You are a faithful God, a loving God. You, you take care of your children, Father God. Yes. You provide ways, you open doors that were shut. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, Father God, you lead your people. So we thank you and we call on your name. We're asking that you bless this worship service, Father God. Let it speak to someone's heart who's watching via internet, whether on their cell phone their tablet wherever they're watching god speak to their hearts lord we're asking that you break chains today father god and set captives free in the name of jesus father god we pray to you and we continue to worship you through a pandemic through a plague dear god through pestilence we've determined we've made up our mind to give you praise and give you glory and give you honor Lord, touch our musicians this morning. Touch our singers this morning. We pray that you touch our scripture readers and our, and our pastor, dear God, as he brings the word of the Lord. Touch our AV team, God. Just touch every ministry in this church. We pray, Father God, we thank you for all the blessings that you've poured upon us, dear God. In spite of what's going on in the world, God, we can still declare there's, there's none like you, God. And so we worship you and we thank you. We pray that someone will hear the word this morning and make up their mind that this is the day of salvation, that I've got to find out more about that name, Jesus the Christ. So we invite someone to, to give their life to Jesus at the conclusion of this service. We just thank you. We just bless you. And we were glad when you said unto us that we will go in the house of the Lord and give you praise and glory. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Our scripture this morning will be led by Dr. Annie Watson, our family support pastor. Amen.
Hello, Canaan family and friends. We want to continue just to be blessed in the Lord. So let us just be blessed by the word of the Lord. In Psalms 37, verses 3 through 6, I'll be reading King James Version. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Yes. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as thy noonday. This is the anointed word of the Lord. We will now have a musical selection by our, our men of promise, followed by our senior pastor, words from our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. W.C. Watson, Jr.
We are pleased. We feel blessed that the Lord indeed has opened up the floodgates for this day, for this worship experience. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. God uh, has been good to us, and he's getting better and better, blessing us exceedingly abundantly, such that he has gathered us he here in this sanctuary with you virtually for another worship experience, for another opportunity to declare that the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. And we're thankful at this point in the month of September that we are in the midst of the Women's Day festivities, of the various activities that the women of this church are hosting and participating in. Uh, we know that they have participated in their Zoom meeting. They had that wonderful fellowship to share with each other. And we are looking forward to them in the week coming uh, to present to us five inspirational messages for Women's Day. Uh, the women who will be part of that group of five, speaking to us, sharing with us, edifying and encouraging us, uh, are truly a talented group of women that uh, we are honored uh, to hear from. And we know that in hearing, there will be a blessing for all. And then of course, uh, for Sunday, September 20th, uh, the grand day of the Women's Day celebration uh, for the online YouTube service and as well as the outside worship service. It is a grand time. It is a blessed time. And we are appreciative of that. And we would just give a shout out to the women for your Women on the Move caravan that's reaching out uh, to those who are homebound, those who are not able to share with us, even at the outside service, uh, to let them know that Canaan cares, uh, that they indeed matter to us, and we're pleased to say hello, to come by, to share greeting and the blessings of the Lord. And not only that, we know that for those of you who may not be able to lead us in worship, who may not uh, be able to lead uh, in the songs, the hymns of Zion, or to have other assignments, you are certainly a part of the worship experience. And you express that uh, through your gifts, uh, through your gifts by way of cash app uh, to this church, of your tithes and your offerings, by way of the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, that's still in operation as far as we know. And uh, some of you avail yourselves of that means. And then some of you are just inclined to come by to share your gifts personally, to bring them here uh, for the staff that awaits to receive them. We're thankful that you give and God blesses your gifts and God smiles on all that we do for his kingdom. With that, let us look to another selection from the men and then the word that the Lord would have us here. Father, he 
will be waiting and my sister she will be there too and we'll walk around heaven all day oh lord above won't you Seven will have no end. We're gonna sing and pray, and God knows I'm gonna praise Him. And when He says, "Well done," that race, that race will be won, and I'll walk around heaven all day. Walk right by, by my side. Hold my hand when my way gets cloudy. I need you, I need you to be my guide. Hey, every day. It's gonna be Sunday, and the Sabbath will have no end. We're gonna sing and pray, and God knows I'm gonna praise Him. And when He says, "Well done," that race, that race will be won. Walk around heaven all for the meditations, the stirrings of this men's chorus as they have blessed us. Uh, we 
certainly enjoyed ourselves. We are thankful. Uh, and I do believe that they were enjoying themselves as much as those of us who were listening. And as we have come, as we are prepared to go forward now with the word, we would simply bow before your presence, Lord, to declare unto your hearing that we are mindful, we realize, we understand, we know that there will be a great getting up morning, that there are wonderful, glorious things in store for your people who are faithful, who have committed themselves to run on to see what the end will be. But we're also thankful, Lord, that this is the day that you have made, that you have given, that you have provided, that we can come, gather, worship, and praise you in it. Bless now, Lord, that which you have prepared, which you have breathed and spoken, that it may become alive and it be helpful and effective within our hearts and within our spirits. Be with us now, anoint the words, declare them helpful, useful, and beneficial. And for that, we will praise you in the name of our Lord and our Christ, even the name of Jesus. We say amen and amen again. There's a word for us in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 17 through 20. In that Old Testament passage in the 22nd chapter of the second book of Samuel, the word of God records this. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They pre prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because, because he delighted in me. And that very last verse, that verse 20, is also expressed uh, in a slightly different way um, in other versions. Uh, on one, uh, in one version it says, he brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. They come to the same conclusion. They come to the same simple thought and expression. And we want to look at that as the basis for our subject today. And that subject is this, delight the Lord. Simply delight the Lord. I, through the inspiration of this word, have been given an assignment through the message. It is an assignment that I will pass on to you, for anyone who wants to embrace it, for anyone who understands the significance of the assignment. Because it is an assignment relevant to some situations and circumstances in this day, but uh, it is one that we should pursue, all of us, in some capacity, all of us should pursue really for the rest of our days. Because if you really want to find joy, happiness, and fulfillment at any time in your life, if you want to feel like a winner on even your worst day, even if it looks like you're in a losing proposition, if you want a joy and contentment that will abide with you and comfort you, no, no matter what you're going through, then I would recommend, I would recommend one thing as a consideration, one thing that you uh, should accept, one thing that you should commit to your own life, and that is what you should make as a goal, as an aspiration uh, in your walk of faith. That is that you simply do this, that you delight the Lord, that you do those things which will bring a sweet aroma uh, before the presence of God, that you do those things that will be seen as a divine pleasure uh, in uh, the sight of God. That uh, is the essence. That is the essence of this testimony, of this song of praise given by David here in 2 Samuel chapter 22. Uh, it is one that we find uh, retold in Psalm 18. Uh, or some would say that Psalm 18 is retold in 2 Samuel 22. 
In this passage that we are lifting up, David expresses a sentiment. Uh, he shares a nugget of faith, that one that kept him during his most difficult times, and one that I know, I know, will be able to keep us as well. Uh, that sentiment that he expresses, that nugget of faith that he shares, declares this, no matter what the circumstances may be, no matter what season you may be in, no matter what troubles are surrounding you at any given time, your head will be lifted up above your problems and your predicament. If you can just hold on to the thought, hold on to the consideration and make this a commitment that God wants to delight in me if I choose to delight in the Lord. David understood this because David certainly was a man who delighted in the Lord. David could say, he could say, God delights in me even though he found himself in some of the most difficult circumstances and horrible situations uh, any person, any child of God could face. Remember, it was David who faced down uh, and killed a lion and a bear who were confronting him uh, trying to steal his sheep. It, it was David who slew uh, the giant called Goliath who was trying to destroy him one who defied the armies uh, uh, of the Most High God. It, it was David uh, who uh, found himself really uh, being hunted down like a, an animal by King Saul, who was trying to annihilate him, to eliminate him uh, as a threat to his throne. But through it all, David was confident that God delighted in him. Uh, the opening passage of that chapter of that of that scripture speaks to that it bears testimony to the confidence that David had that he walked in the favor of God and because God was faithful in keeping and delivering him David came to know God intimately uh, not only that he came to know the attributes of God specifically and so David could spell it out for us. He could spell it out and say, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. That my God is my rock in whom I will take refuge, my shield, uh, the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. Not only that, he came to understand how God operates. Would that we know and fully realize it, and would that we could comprehend how God operates and, and what God cherishes. Uh, how God operates, how, how God expresses and shows and demonstrates what are the ways of God. David came to know that God will show himself strong for his beloved uh, to those whom he cherishes. Uh, he is a deliverer uh, in a time of distress. He'll show that he will uh, be there to show up and show out uh, in the power of his might and his majesty. That he will rock this world and shake the foundations for the people he loves. That's why David could testify uh, in the passage. That's why David was sure to declare this. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. The earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the heavens shook. They trembled because he was angry. Don't you know that God will get angry for his people? That God will get angry for his beloved? And when God steps forth out of anger to declare this uh, is my child, leave my beloved uh, alone, get thee behind me, Satan then we know that things move, things change, and God will, God will indeed transform the atmosphere. Not only did David come to know how God operates, he came to know what God cherishes and, and the things uh, uh, in which God delights. David uh, could declare in, in, uh, further in the passage, he brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted uh, in me. God 
delighted in him. He, he could say, he can say, uh, he could say, uh, he delights in me because I have tried to be upright and honorable in all my ways. He delights in me because I've been faithful to him and I would never turn my back on him. He delights in me because I've been guided by his word and I have not forsaken his teachings. Uh, David could express uh, in many ways uh, the same sentiment uh, as the psalmist in Psalm 1. I have not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor have I stood in the way of sinners, nor have I sat in the seat of the scornful, but I have delighted myself in the law of the Lord, and, and his law doth I meditate day and night. And, and because I have been faithful to God, David's on a roll now, because I've been faithful to God, God has been faithful to me to give me victory over my adversaries, to give me honor even in the eyes of strangers, and to make my enemies my footstool. That's how the God we serve, the God of, of David, the God that we worship and love and adore, and adore. that is how God operates. That's why a wise and seasoned David could say many years, uh, many years into his old age, uh, as recorded in Psalm 37, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. This is the essential message of David's song of praise. That there is a supreme benefit when you delight yourself uh, in the Lord. Uh, the Lord will show his delight in you and he will do so gloriously. Uh, someone needs to understand, someone needs uh, to know, someone needs to develop a new walk uh, of confidence and assurance in the thought uh, that God delights in me. Uh, what a thought it is, what an inspiration. Uh, when you truly believe it, when you embrace it within your very soul, that God likes me and he cherishes me, that God is pleased that I'm alive. He's pleased that I know that in him I live and move and have my being. God takes pleasure in my company and my fellowship with him because he blesses me to enter into his presence with thanksgiving and to come before him with praise. Uh, he enjoys the intimacy of my worship, my prayers, and my meditations. That's why he is inclined when I beseech him and ask of him, he is inclined to anoint the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Simply put, God delights in me and he has assured me that he will keep me in his keeping because I am his beloved and he is mine. Uh, now uh, we can say that we're sure David understands. Uh, he understands that God uh, has delighted in him, uh, but not necessarily in everything that he's done. Uh, I think we need to add that caveat before we adjourn from this place. David knows that God has not been pleased with everything. Uh, God, uh, uh, in, in so many respects, is like a loving parent or grandparent. They don't always appreciate everything their children do, but they do always appreciate their children. Uh, and, and David certainly didn't always do delightful things, acceptable things, pleasing things in the presence of God. Uh, you remember it was David who pursued another man's wife. And then went about the business of destroying uh, that man. Uh, it, it was David who was sometimes found to be a neglectful parent uh, to his children. And that led to one of them, in particular Absalom, seeking to snatch the throne fr from him. It, it was David who would sometimes do things that grieved and displeased the Lord. I hope we all understand that at some time or another we have done things, we have gone in a direction, we have thought things that did not please the God who loves and cherishes us. Uh, oh, oh, but let me add this. David knew this though. 
uh, in it and through it and in spite of it, he knew that he was an anointed son of the Most High God and that he was one who God would keep and bless and honor all the days of his life. That's something that we need to understand for ourselves. Those of us who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, those whom he saved and that he has redeemed and, and, and is prepared to deliver. Uh, those whom he picked up from the miry clay, those who, who were lost uh, but are now found, blind uh, but now they can see, those uh, who did not seek after him, did not pursue him, uh, those who never had a thought about him, but he came searching for us. There is a thought that will bless us and keep us and uplift us and strengthen and fortify us. It is that we are the Lord's anointed. Uh, we are the apple of God's eye. That we are the choice and chosen vessels uh, of the Lord God Almighty. And, and because we love the Lord and, and because we serve the Lord and because uh, we are always inclined to glorify the Lord, the Lord has delighted in us because David understood that we can understand it as well. And David helps us to realize this, that God is not just a sometime God, a passing flu, uh, you know, a notion that's here today and gone tomorrow. God blesses perpetually. Uh, does that, that word tell us in a psalm? Uh, God has been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever he formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting he is God uh, God promised David that I'll bless you I'll bless you and I I, I will increase uh, your anointing I will do all of the wonderful things you would want me to do in life but not only that I will bless your children and, but not only that I will bless your children's children and, and, and your offspring will will never your offspring will never leave the throne uh, uh, in the kingdom before my presence and that's why that's why in the spirit of his offspring uh, in the legacy of uh, the service and the sacrifice of the mind the worship and the anointing of David uh, we have the person of Jesus Christ I believe that when we delight in the Lord he will perpetually bless us also and he will allow us to magnify uh, his gifts his blessings his bounty uh, in the presence of others then we too will know like David uh, who understood that the Lord was his shepherd. We, we too will be able to say that the Lord is my shepherd and in him I shall not want. That is, he supplies all of my needs. We too will be able to declare as David did that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and there are some difficult times that come, there are some troubling times that come, he could still say I will fear no evil. Uh, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me as God will comfort uh, his beloved. He will comfort those that delight themselves in him. A and we should be able to say like David, and, and I will, I will because of my relationship, because of my blessing, my standing in the Lord, because I am beloved of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will receive and acknowledge and walk in the favor of my God for eternity. That I will benefit and I will receive the bounty of the Lord all the days of my life. I'm so glad that we have an opportunity today. We may have been busy and distracted with something else. Uh, we may have been hosting a pity party. We may have been declaring to friends and neighbors, woe is me. We may have been freaked out by the pandemic, but uh, God has another assignment for us today. And that is, delight yourself uh, in the Lord, and God will bless you exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever want or wish. Isn't that a delightful thought that we can delight the Lord, uh, that we can honor him and praise him and worship him and magnify him, that God is pleased, so pleased that he has decided and understands that 
uh, you're falling, you've failed, uh, you have shortcomings, but I have declared that I will look beyond your faults to see your needs because, because I delight in you and your walk of faith. Praise be his name. We are thankful today that we can speak to those that we know delight the Lord. We're thankful for this word, this word that should encourage us, this word that should keep us, this word that should pick us up. Somebody needs to know right now that this is not just another Sunday morning message, but it is a word to them. It is a word to their life. It is a word to their walk of faith. It is a word to their mind and to their spirit uh, that they would walk in a new confidence with a new determination, that they would walk up in a new spirit of faith that uh, I have delighted the Lord because I am the Lord's anointed. We're thankful for that. We're thankful for all that God does, for all of the ways that God smiles upon us, for him keeping us in spite of ourselves, in difficulties, in trials, and through travails, that the Lord would let us know, I am near by if you call on me, I'm always present if you need me, and I will never leave you or forsake you. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for this encouragement. Thank you for this reassurance that someone who listens today, someone who is prepared to ask you to bless the words of their mouth, the meditation of their hearts, Someone who is seeking a new understanding, a new intimacy that they might have with you can come to understand that indeed, with God's permission, they can delight the Lord. With that, we are prepared to go down from this place to adjourn now with the gift of a word, of a new insight of a new charge in our lives and that is that we would go forth and understand there's a reason that the Lord has brought you to this place and has delivered you from all those things and he has done it because he delights in you let us say in the name of Jesus that we are thankful, we are honored, that we are privileged today to be the beloved of the Lord, to be the redeemed, those delivered, those whom God embraces and draws to him in spiritual intimacy, to whisper to us words of encouragement, words that would compel us and bless us to go on in spite of the difficulties, the dangers, the challenges, the doubts, and the fears, that you are my beloved, and I am yours. And because you are a loving God, because you are a great and glorious God, a merciful God, we bless and honor you through this message, through the words of your Spirit, and through the confidence that we have that all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us. And now as we would be adjourned, as we would go down from this place, we present ourselves unto him, unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, and power this day and every day and as we say that we declare to you lord amen <laughs>